Go. Today I'm going to talk about ascites in dogs. So what is ascites? It's an abdominal effusion, which is just the buildup of fluid the, from the body tissues that collects in the abdominal cavity. And sometimes it will end up flooding into the chest cavity as well once the abdominal cavity gets too full. It's common in dogs and cats, and it's usually caused by something that is more serious. Um, and you can see here, normally, the abdomen kind of comes up towards the pelvis area, but here it distends down past this normal contour line. So when I looked up most common causes, around 15 came up every time, but the five that kept cropping up were um, right-sided heart failure, which left-sided heart failure results in the chest buildup first, which is just pulmonary edema, whereas right-sided heart failure starts flooding the abdomen first. Chronic liver disease, which uh, results in a decreased protein production by the liver or an increased resistance to blood flow in the liver. Peritonitis, which is the inflammation or infection of the abdominal lining by things such as bacteria. Abdominal tumors, which causes decreased lymph flow or fluid production by the tumor. And then protein losing enteropathy, which is just a GI disorder that causes protein to be lost through stool. And so the low blood protein levels lead to the ascites. Other things that can cause it are things like trauma injury, hookworms, and hypertension. So symptoms can be a distended, uncomfortable abdomen like you saw in the first picture. Uh, loss of appetite, difficulty breathing or coughing due to that fluid that comes up into the chest, vomiting and lethargy. In the diagnosis, the ascites can be diagnosed with just a routine physical exam and sometimes they take a CT scan just to be sure that it is fluid that's in the abdomen. And since it's a symptom in and of itself, further diagnostics should be done to determine the root cause. Things like blood work, tests for protein levels and the blood pressure. Your analysis, x-rays, and EKGs can determine whether or not it's heart failure. And then sampling of abdominal fluid can also tell you kind of what's going on just based on the proteins and other things that are in there, whether it's pus or blood or anything like that. And that's what they're doing with this dog right here. So treatment basically just depends on the cause. Um, usually they'll do an abdominal tap to remove fluid and make the animal more comfortable as well as testing that fluid. Surgery in cases of tumors or abdominal bleeding are necessary to remove the tumor or fix the internal bleed. Things like antibiotics in the cases of peritonitis, diuretics to remove excess bodily fluids, and then medications to control underlying diseases such as kidney disease or heart failure. And it also said that if your animal has problems um, and is taking diuretics, you can also uh, decrease the amount of sodium in their diet to reduce the fluid intake as well. And then I had pictures, but when I transferred my phone over to a new one, I lost them all. But I found a veterinarian that has a blog online, and this is the same exact case as what I saw two summers ago. And this dog is named Ginny. You can see, obviously, on the left side, she's very swollen in the abdominal area. And then on the right side, um, after they did the tap, that's all the fluid that came out of her stomach and abdo abdomen and her chest and everything and they found out that she was having right-sided heart failure, but they caught it in enough time that they were able to help repair the issues and kind of make it to where she was able to live. And then a week later, she came back, and this is what she looked like after. She was 24 pounds lighter. Yeah. So there was a lot of fluid that built up, and it doesn't happen like over time. It happens pretty rapidly. So management and quality of life Ascites can be managed and reduced while your dog is undergoing treatment for the underlying cause, but if the cause is not treated, it'll just keep coming back until you do something about what's causing it. It may result in more frequent vet visits, different dietary changes, and lifelong medication, but the animal's health can be managed in most cases, and they can continue to have a happy life if you do what's necessary for them. And those are my sources. Those are your sources. Any questions for Holly? Comments? What's the term, uh, I'm looking for a term when you stick a needle into the abdomen to get the body fluids out. Hmm? Yeah, synthesis is the ending, abdominal synthesis, because synthesis means you're going to stick a needle someplace, and in this case that's what they were doing for the dog. Yeah. And normally you wouldn't get obviously much fluid out, and basically Rochelle backed me up on this, should be acellular, isn't it? Mostly any fluid coming from the abdominal cavity. Of course, that was kind of blood tinged, so there must be yeah. red blood cells in that. White because blood it cells. said um, if it's peritonitis or things like that where there's an infection, it's usually like milk colored More because white. it's pus, but 
when it's yeah. not something like that. It looks clear when it's coming out, but when you accumulate enough of it, there's it's blood colored yeah. because there is blood in the fluid. Right. So sometimes what's coming out gives you a hint of what's going on. Yeah. 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 Ascites. Yes. Very common. There's a question or yeah. comment. So how does what's the linkage between uh, heart failure and the abdominal cavity filling up? Like, is it filled up with? Is there like a hole in the heart that's causing this? Or um, when I looked it up, there wasn't anything that was like super definitive on that. I think it just might be an issue of. Um, when it's not working correctly, things aren't pumping the way they should, and so it just kind of like all pools and sits right there just because there's nothing moving it along. What's well, right heart failure, right? Michelle, you want to say something about it? I can. Um, so if you think about, I'm just going to draw it. I don't, I'm not good with words. So basically. Because that's a good question, though. Well, you know, right heart failure, how does that lead to ascites? Turns, yeah. Yeah. So this is the rest of the body. I'm very good at artists. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you have right-sided heart failure, basically that means your heart can't contract as well. So then it won't be able to go. Oh, well, yeah. But um, so it can't go back to the rest of the body because it's oxygenated. So it's not pumping, so everything's going to basically go back this way. It's a backlog then, basically. Kind of. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's not flowing through the right heart, and right. it's leaking all these places. Yeah. Right. Whereas if you have left-sided heart failure, um, okay, so we know this is deoxygenated blood, and normally this blood would go to the lungs. I'm writing the blood to the lungs. It goes to the lungs. So if you have left-sided heart failure, the uh, left won't contract as much, so it's going to flow back into the lungs, and so you get pulmonary disease. Yeah. So Does that make sense? Did I confuse you more? So right-hearted... Okay. Failure leads to ascites, whereas left-hearted failure leads to fluid. That's okay. No, don't erase it. I'll erase it later. Sit down. <laughs> but yeah, that's a good question. And then another thing about ascites, you know, that's a general term, any fluid in the abdominal cavity. Do you know the liver can weep? W-E-E-P. You can have a weeping liver. Where liver, the fluid is flowing out of the surface of the liver because of bad blood flow. So, yeah, very good. Okay, we'll go to the next person.